Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this live episode of Think Business. Looking forward to talking with Mark Firth. Um, Mark, it's great to have you. I love talking about LinkedIn. You're the founder of um, Linkedpreneurs, a seven-figure business that helps business owners and solopreneurs make more money using um, LinkedIn and getting leads. And so, um, and I should say qualified leads. You know, let, I want to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of LinkedIn because I think, yep. I think a lot of times people don't necessarily know how to even use LinkedIn. You know, it's one of those where, you know, I think people know that they can generate business, but they're not sure exactly how to communicate on it. So can we, can we start there? You know, what are some of the ways that you recommend people utilize the tool before we dive into how you get leads from it? I've got very strict instructions to be concise. I'm going to try my best to answer this concisely. Um, I didn't say concise. I just said, don't be long winded. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah. There's two fundamental levels. And I'm glad you used the word fundamental in the question in which I want to answer this. And the first thing is this. Um, I, I have a take a slightly different view to LinkedIn versus Facebook versus Instagram versus Facebook. To everyone, I believe that there's fundamentals involved in using every single platform. Yeah. Right. We're dealing with human beings. If you're not dealing with human beings and you are that, you're probably dealing with human beings in some way, shape or form anyway. So yeah. first of all, we, we, we need to stop thinking about the tactics. Oh, like, how do I change my URL? How do I get the audio pronunciation of my name? And we need to start thinking about the fundamental human behavior, reciprocity, authority, social proof, all those sorts of things like Robert Cialdini and, and various authors write about in such detail. Beyond that, there are some fundamental differences on the LinkedIn platform that allow us to get quick results. And, and, and something I always say is it, it comes from its origins as a resume based website. That means on LinkedIn, it's unique because there's so much information in every single profile. You can see where people have worked for all their life, languages they speak, the charities they're involved in. You can see yeah. all, where they went to college. So I always say to my clients, First thing you need to do, whether you're targeting, you know, big blue Fortune 100 or, you know, Joe down the road running a coaching company, cross-reference your target market with the college you went to. If you didn't go to college with the businesses you worked to, if you didn't work at a business, I can't help you. But something you've done in your life, right? Right. Because it's a formative period of your life. And, and that's how I got my business going. That's how my clients get so many of their first clients, just by approaching people that went to their college. Yeah. So. There's just more information, and that means, in a nutshell, there's more ways to create context. And if we think about lead generation, we'd never need to go cold if there's context. Yeah. Use it to create context. Simple as that. Well, I, lo I love what you're saying because it's kind of like one of those things that are hidden in plain sight, right? So, yeah. you yeah. know, what's the, you know, what's my value? What am I doing? What's my value yeah. prop? Well, well, the value prop is that you went to the same college. It was, um, I think it was University of Michigan. Um, someone was sharing with me, they did a study. And if you yep. left a message that said, um, you went to U of M, I went to U of M, like it was like a 67, 70 yeah. plus percent increase in, a, in getting a return call. So I think that is a, a, a great fundamental tip. Um, and then learning how to use the tool. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. I think anybody can, for the sake of time today, we yeah. can dive into it, you know, Google how to search people um, yeah. using, you know, to be able to find them from uh, uh, for, uh, for where they went to school. So, so let's now talk about um, your business. And so yep. everybody is looking for not just a lead, but, um, but a qualified lead. Yep. And um and I think, you know, there's a lot of companies that will say, oh, we'll get you a qualified lead. We'll get you a qualified lead. You know, you're, you're, you're very bold in the way you talk about your business saying, hey, we will get you qualified leads in less than 30 days. And so yeah. how do you do that? We, we do that in two ways. First of all, we build relationships. And I know that that sounds absolutely like you're, you're, you're telling me a circle is round and a square is square. But the fact that there's so much demand for our services shows people do not actually know the nuance and science and art of building relationships. That's the first thing we do. Secondly, I... Can I um, comment on that real quickly? Yeah, I, sure. I also believe that people don't put enough um, emphasis on building relationship capital with people, you know, just because the technology is there doesn't mean it's it's one and done. You can't send an email on LinkedIn yeah. and think that you're going to get business. You still need to be persistent and consistent and and follow kind of the 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 continuum of sales and building yeah. relationships. It starts it starts right there. So 
I, I concur with what you're talking about. Exactly. So that's the first thing we do. The second thing is people tell me, I don't know if this is true, that I have a pretty unique skill set in that I started my career at Siemens. I worked at IBMs. I worked at startups. I've sold to companies like BMW, Pepsi, right down to local gyms. So I understand B2B and I understand long sales cycles. I've also learned what I would call direct response marketing mm -hmm. in terms of long form copy, webinar, paid advertising and all that sort of stuff. So what we actually do a lot on LinkedIn, which is, is kind of, I'm kind of the anti-LinkedIn guy whilst being on LinkedIn. I drive Facebook ads to my LinkedIn profile because that's how you find qualified leads. On LinkedIn, it's slow burn. It's message this person, message this person. Do you need help? Do you need help? I just throw an ad out there and go, do you need help with this? Connect with me on LinkedIn. I've got a conversation. And that's what we've been doing very recently to a lot of success because it's a false conception. It's good positioning by LinkedIn that LinkedIn is a B2B platform. LinkedIn has nowhere, num nowhere near the number of users that Facebook does. It has, it's nowhere near as sticky. And that's why they haven't got a decent ad platform. Facebook is still the number one. Even if people don't identify as a business owner or a CEO or a high level contact on Facebook, Facebook knows they are because it follows them around the net. The net. So, so we take advantage of that. And I do a very simple funnel driving people to my LinkedIn and, and I help my clients do the same thing. But let me ask you a question. So you're you're doing a Facebook ad to move them to LinkedIn. I think someone would be listening to that saying, um, why don't you just build a relationship with them on Facebook? What is why why transfer the relationship from Facebook over to a LinkedIn relationship building the process. We found that people do that there's a number of reasons for it. And first and foremost, we tested that and it didn't work as well. So we don't actually know why it didn't work as well, but I will give my theory. As I just alluded to, you know, the average CEO on Facebook, they've got a picture of cat, the cat. They're never on there. There's nothing in the feed. On LinkedIn, they're in the suit. They're positioned as the authority. They tend to like doing business on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And the statistics that back this up, I can pull it up. Because when I started looking into it, where, where is this statistic? I find it because I just delivered a, a training on this. According to Iron Paper 2017, 50% of LinkedIn users say they're more likely to buy from a company that interact with on LinkedIn. It's just they feel at home. That is my theory. Secondly, it tends to give you more authority in B2B if you go to LinkedIn. Let, yeah. Let's be honest. Why, why fight the current? Why swim against the current? Facebook, yeah. wrongly or rightly, has a perception of biz up, get rich quick. Just do this and you're going to be a millionaire in 12 hours. I promise you, you know, yeah. LinkedIn, they can check you out. The profile gives more information as yeah. if they go to the LinkedIn profile that they can see. I worked at IBM. They can see I worked at Siemens. They can feel more at home. So yes, the, the short answer is it just works better. We tested it. The long answer is I don't know why, but that's, that's my theory. Well, well, I, I would agree with that theory. I think um, LinkedIn allows you to kind of build a yeah. platform where you show not only your credentials, but your yep. credibility. And there's yes. a there's a higher level of professionalism. I find for my business, I get a lot of business off of LinkedIn, but my Facebook business is more referrals, personal yeah. connections, you know, things of that nature. And so I totally, you know, um, uh, I've never thought of it that way, but it makes complete sense. And so I love yeah. that you um, um, are, are doing that, talking about it, uh, sharing that. Um, because it, uh, it, it, I think it's, it's brilliant. It sounds pretty brilliant. So now let me ask you a question. So now yep. you're building these relationships. Let's talk about how long it takes to build a qualified lead. You know, we've all gotten, if somebody's listening to this, you know, we've all gotten, you know, a, you know, um, someone requesting yep. a connection, you could, you accept it. And then all of a sudden you get an email, you know, a robot email that basically yeah, yeah. sound like you mm -hmm. are best friends and that, and you keep on getting repeat, repeat, repeat. I don't know if that's the best way. I, those sometimes turn me off. And so how how do you build rapport, you know, on an ongo in an ongoing way where it's not um, where you don't feel like it's just a generic connection? Yeah. So again, this goes back to what I what I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation. I don't see lead generation as lead generation. I see lead generation as creating context. The more context you have, if you went to the same college, you've got that context. It's there. If you don't, you've got to create the context for the conversation. Yeah. So I, I mean, let's take the example. If you're walking down the street and, and someone comes up to you and just starts talking at you, you're like, 
whoa, who's this person? But if they come up to you and with the context of the conversation, could you tell me where the train station is? Oh, I've lost my watch. Right. Yeah, it doesn't happen so much these days. I'm from a different generation, but because they've got the phone. Um, could, could you just tell me the time? You, you, you're more comfortable with the conversation. So you've got to be able to do that. As for the idea of how long does it take? Look, we all... Like people get out of bed every single day and we all want that one message that goes, oh my God, Mark, I'm so glad you posted about what you do because I'm just this second looking for what you sell. Right. I've got my credit card in hand. I don't care how much you charge. How do I buy? It doesn't happen. It might happen once in a while, but a lot of the research, I think it's Forrester says that 50 cents of people need five touches. So, and, and a lot of research would, would give a similar message. People buy in different ways, but I yeah. like to look at what works for most of the people most of the time, and they do need the relationship. So you've got to build the relationship. Don't ask a freaking question. Yeah. Sandler, value-based selling, all this stuff. The first thing they teach you to do is ask a question. No, be standoffish. Hey, name, great to be connected. I'll be looking forward to check, check out your concept. Nothing. Give it time. Time builds authority. Don't be chasing like a Labrador with a stick. That's uh, going back to the principles of psychology. It gives away the authority, you know? That's my top level answer. I don't want to be long-winded, but there's a lot to dig into there. But no, but I, I, I like what you're saying. All right, so um, so rewind for me for a minute. So yep. you said earlier you were kind of like the anti-LinkedIn person. And so rewind for me how an anti-LinkedIn kind of LinkedIn person now starts a LinkedIn basically driven right. company. Let, 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 me, let me qualify the, com the, the comment. I do not yeah. love any social media platform. And the reason I don't love any social media platform is I'm not a huge fan of big tech. That uh, Simple as that. What I see them as is, is, is a tool that allow me to create great relationships with fantastic people. And that's, you know, that's what I do. I think LinkedIn, a lot of the stuff on there and a lot of the content I don't agree with, but that's the same on any platform. So all I'm saying is I don't agree with the traditional way of doing LinkedIn, which is a slow burn, slowly build the relationships. I'm just a paid ads guy. I like to send the ads into LinkedIn and have the, the conversations ready. Mm -hmm. That's what I was, I was, I was trying to. Okay. To no, I got it. All right. So rewind with, for me a little bit more, because I think, you know, right now we have a recent uh, study, 4 million people have left their jobs in April. Uh, they're looking to go to new places, oh, new, new career paths, new companies, start their own business, you know, rewind and give me the, the one minute readers digest of how the entrepreneurial seed was planted in you. Um, by necessity, I'm not the typical story. I came to Colombia. Uh, I'm speaking to you from Bogota, Colombia. Today, um, met a girl, fell in love, kid on kid on the way, couldn't get a job, didn't speak Spanish, had to do something. Uh -huh. And I think there's a lot in that. You have to do something, and and you you, you need to do it. I've seen the, the articles. I think you're referring to the Great Resignation. Um, I think a lot of people are in for a short, sharp shock because some of them will be successful, but I think there's a lot of um, how can I put this politely? There's a lot of propaganda and people don't understand what it takes to build a business and make it work. You know? Yeah. It's a lot um, of work. There has to be something pulling you, not just pushing you. And, yeah. And that was the case with me. Yeah. I think, I think, I think we all need to kind of find kind of yeah. and understand what our why is, what our purpose is, yeah. where our alignment is. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, what good we want to kind of, how we want to use our gift and, 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 you know, and put our yeah. soul into helping others, you know, um, you know, yeah rise up yeah so so let me ask you this so so now somebody who is on linkedin haven't really done anything haven't updated their profile i think we see that a lot you yeah. know what are some of the key fundamental things you need to do to get ready before you can even start doing some of the stuff that you do because when people come to your landing page on linkedin it's got to look yeah. a certain it's got to look a certain way it's got to feel a certain way i mean it needs to it needs yeah, to yeah. represent you like you said earlier yeah, the, the first thing I'd say is stop getting ready to get ready. Stop thinking yeah. about getting ready. Understand that in order to learn how to do the thing, you have to do the thing. You don't learn how to do the thing by thinking about doing the thing. Right. It's, that's the equivalent of doing a drive from Tampa to San Diego and waiting until you see the California state rhyme before you start driving. It's just not going to happen. With that right. said, psychology out of the way, update your profile today after listening to this. It shouldn't take you more than 15 minutes. It's never going to be perfect. You're going to change, but it's better done than perfect. Yeah. Cover image. Don't put what you're selling. Put an image that builds authority. You presenting to people. You um, in, a, in a meeting room in front of people. You can get that done now. COVID's over. You can get that done, right? Um, if you haven't got that, something simple. 
not hammering them with your web address and all that because on a platform where nobody likes to be sold to the last thing you want to do is sell a pitch pays a thousand words get a decent profile image run it through photofeeler.com make sure it's above eight on likability authority and trust it costs you twenty dollars headlines should be outcome based and name your market nobody is interested in um in in your job title nobody at all they yeah. want to know what you can do for them i help x to get x just repeat it in the profile body Go and connect with people that went to university. And yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. what you're talking about. I mean, use the real estate to talk about how you can be of service yeah. and the benefits of you. Uh, yeah. Don't use it to use, you know, just generic titles and yeah. generic yeah. and generic speak. I love it. Um, yeah. All right, Mark, you ready for a quick speed round? Yep, yep, yep. You, you got a, you got a lot of books behind you. What's your favorite one and why? Oh, do you know what? I, I have I have favorites that change all the time. But I just finished this morning the org the 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 audio book written by um, who not how who who's the um, strategic coach oh, Dan Sullivan. Dan Sullivan. It's an amazing book. I thought this just looks too obvious, but the book was fantastic. I love Joe Dispenza's stuff. I I enjoy Daniel Priestley. He's based in the UK. He's got a good book called Oversubscribe. But who not how? I'm recommending right now to everyone. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was phenomenal. Oh, good. That's good to know. I like Dan Sullivan's work. Uh, yeah, he's a coach and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Best piece of wisdom you've ever received? Um, <laughs> that's a really difficult question. Just imperfect action is better than no action at all. Yeah. I mean, that's my match. I love that. Yeah. You mentioned that earlier. Um, finish, finish this sentence. The very yeah. first thing that every entrepreneur needs to do when starting a business is is start to reframe how they see problems. Mm -hmm. we're, still, we're still conditioned as a society, I believe, that problems are bad. They're a gift. Tony Robbins says it yeah. um, himself. But, but to actually know that, you, you can say you know it, but actually to be able to know it's your bones so that when the, 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 the proverbial hits the fan, you actually feel it as the first response, yeah. that requires conditioning. And, yeah. and, and that's what you need to get to because they are a gift. I love it. Um, you mentioned, you touched on this earlier, but mm. define fulfillment. Fulfillment for me, I've got the picture down here. Success, doing what you want, when you want, with who you want. I mean, the money's just a tool to get yeah, you there. I agree. Success, success, and that Tony Robbins, you're talking about Tony Robbins, success yeah. minus fulfillment equals failure is one of, yeah, my, I love that quote. Is one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. Um, I just think it's great. Um, as a business owner, what keeps you up at night and what's the solution? <laughs> Of my kids <laughs> i don't oh, worry well. about the business i used to worry about the business now you know yeah because it's 2017 and I, I i mean this i just know whatever happens i can figure it out yeah we've had so many great. and that's why I, I don't i don't get kept up good i love that that's a great thing to end on you know yeah. whatever happens you can figure it out uh, mark tell people how they can connect with you and who your ideal clients are so, so John was really good about my my second name. He did ask to pronounce it at the end. So I've been I've been told I need to get a, a more phonetically friendly website for the podcast because some of you are listening to audio. Getmarkshelp.com. We've got a free gift there to get your LinkedIn profile up, get you going on LinkedIn. And even if you are advanced on LinkedIn, there's some pretty advanced stuff like about how not to ask questions in messages, you know, question-based selling being dead, how to transition from personal to business, all sorts of awesome stuff in there. www.getmarkshelp.com. I love it. Mark, I appreciate um, you being on the show. Um, thanks so much. I mean, you, oh, you, you, brought up, you brought up a lot of, um, you know, really, really great points. Um, and I just want to kind of touch a, on, 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 yep. on a couple of them, um, you know, because to me, the through line of all of it was believe in yourself, have yep. the courage, you'll, you can fit, you can, you have the tools um, yep. within you to figure things out. You know, yep. don't don't wait perf for perfection. Yep. Um, don't always be getting ready to get ready. Right. Just yeah. take action yeah. and go. And, you know, no matter I love what you said at the end. Right. No matter what happens, I can figure it out. I think we all have more um, instincts and intuition inside of us that we just, you know, need to almost take a moment every day to tap into that. And 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 if we can do that every day and grow one percent by just being still and being more aware as as business people and just human beings, I think everybody benefits, including um, as we talk about business, our businesses, but also us as human beings. Um, any final thoughts? No, like you, you've said it better than I could say it myself. And and uh, um, just one final thought, John. I saw at the beginning of your biography the um, 
the the Brian Tracy stuff. You got oh, him yeah. when you're 18. I, I only discovered him when I'm 40. I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's awesome. So there we go. I love Brian Tracy. No, he was a yeah. he had a huge impact on my what I'm doing right now was because of those tape as I'm 49. Those tapes that my dad gave me when I was 18 years old um, are what I knew um, my alignment and my fulfillment was doing what I'm doing now, business coaching awesome. with solopreneurs and Fortune 100 companies and everything in between all over the world. And uh, it's great that I get to do podcasts like this and talk to people like you and learn from you. Uh, it's great. So I, I can't thank you enough. Think community, if Mark can help you, um, please reach out. Also, if you... Um, want to download my books for free, uh, my book, The Think Big Movement, and uh, How to Think Big, a 100-page ebook workbook, go to my website, download them for free. Mark, any um, anything else you want to end on? No, I just want to say right. thank you, and I want to wish everyone a wonderful day, evening, yeah. night, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Me too. Thanks, Think Community. Uh, Mark, thanks, man. This was great. Appreciate you. Thank you.